Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for uh, coming uh, today for this uh, very important public lecture. And uh, I'm I'm really honored to be on this podium <clears throat> because uh, both the gentlemen I had here delivering the lecture are uh, one of the inspiration I had met in my life. So, so their knowledge their uh, dedications to work and uh, how they uh, their ethics are unbelievable so uh, i'm really honored to have you here uh, mr felix and uh, mr aruna uh, in this isl uh, public lecture session where we can talk a lot about uh, chemistry and all the matters that related to our engineering field so today uh, we uh, this is the third public lecture we uh, have uh, for this session on protective co uh, coating system and corrosion protection. Uh, this topic is very important area in engineering field. You can you can see uh, today uh, many structures had been installed without proper protection system, which uh, uh, need continuous you know uh, attention of painting or prevention system where you will not be able to attend to it once you install it right so uh, the cost of uh, material uh, loose of material and all the uh, rectification is uh, making our country pay much more than it could have been done earlier right so uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm again uh, think that this session would uh, deliver good knowledge to all our engineers and the uh, other other public uh, gathered here because I know there are uh, some uh, uh, railway uh, technician team also participate in this session and uh, there are a lot of uh, people online also so that. Uh, uh, we all uh, can gather more knowledge on uh, this area when we are working in future, how to address uh, a metal structure before installing and even when you have a structure, how to uh, uh, protect it properly. So, uh, so uh, this session is an awareness session. So, we wanted to lead this one into a CPD session, which will be three-day program where we will go into detailed designs of correct protective system. So this will give overview uh, what we are talking about. So please uh, try to uh, participate on the design part of it and uh, try to gather as much as experience we can gather from these two uh, veteran uh, professionals uh, we are, uh, which will benefit all our engineering community. So uh, now uh, I would like to cordially uh, invite uh, Mr. Felix and uh, Mr. Aruna Rajaratne to come into the podium and take a seat uh, in the podium so that you, you can start uh, your session here. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you very much, uh, sir, for inviting us for this uh, session. Also, uh, giving us opportunity to, to uh, partake with uh, various uh, information and data. So this is the public lecture on the corrosion. And uh, uh, we thank uh, Engineer Juan Nagawat and Engineer Rajitas Nara Singh for coordinating this uh, program till today. So uh, today our, <clears throat> our, our, our assignment is uh, rust, frustration and trust. So like we need to have trust in our systems, designs, but uh, when the rust is uh, too much, it's uh, frustrating everybody. 
and not only uh, frustration, there's a huge cost. So uh, Felix, I'm the corrosion spokesman, Katana Ayaka, and Mr. Aruna is my guru, and uh, he's the he's a, he's an independent consultant. Uh, so we call ourselves uh, CC team, that is uh, corrosion control team. So uh, to focus on this uh, control, because uh, rust uh, or corrosion or deterioration cannot be stopped. Malakat not thunder bear. Malakat a palani cream with rekaranapulo. So, uh, based on that, there are so many research uh, done by various uh, parties, especially in the US. Uh, so, there's a thing called a cost of corrosion. Now, corrosion has a cost. No one knows what this is. Then, the loss of metal. Yeah, deteriorate with design durability. Now, when you are planning a building, okay, we'll tell you the building should wait for 100 years or 25 years, whatever, there's a duration involved. Then there's a warranty, guarantee, and liability. Because when you have a building, very invariably you are uh, selecting a, a, a contractor who is going to give a warranty and who is going to give a guarantee. Uh, right, thank you. Right. Uh, then there is a thing called a project defect liability period. So you all know about it. Then finally, the, it comes to the damage control. When everything goes for a six, then you are thinking do not warranty and guarantee how to uh, control the damage. So based on that, this John Ruskin has always already told, quality is never an accident because uh, here in this our country, many people think by accident talk, hook or crook, it's be okay. And we are very positive thinking uh, uh, citizens. But the, uh, it is always a result of an intelligent effort. So intelligent effort is the thing what we are going to discuss. So now, uh, sorry. Now, uh, now this is a, this is actually Lakvijaya coal power station. Now, there's a big rust uh, wind barrier. Now, after three years of erection, this this was how it looked like. So, now, where is the design? Now, we always say durability is 25 years. So, in 20, 2029, there is a wind barrier being constructed. And then, by 2021, after the COVID, it's all corroded. It can't be due to the COVID inside in the bear. So, there is a, a issue to be taken. Now, this one is a uh, hotel in uh, this Bopit area. Now there is a nice, beautiful hotel. So all steel with the swimming pool, everything. But now the owners are coming and telling us, and they don't have money to repair because still, the, although this budget type tourists are coming, arriving. So now they are asking how, what to do. So that's uh, one of the uh, second uh, uh, situation we call for now, this is another one. Now this building is a very high rise building. So on the window sills or the nuts and bowls, all corroded. So now this kind of a thing, of course, you can manage costs, but if it is a huge uh, uh, corrosion areas, then, then you need to uh, uh, spend a lot of money and people don't have the money to spend. So what we say is, why did this corrosion take place in this point? And if the design was correctly done, then it won't corrode. So this means that original corrosion design has been neglected. That is a simple reason is we don't know the design uh, standard. Now, now I'll tell you something very funny. Now, uh, there are so many companies. They have ICTAD, they have CEDA, sorry. They have a lot of other qualifications and big, big, big number company names. So say uh, you will appoint as a company to build the structures. So the top level management, they are fully qualified, graduated, they, they know everything. Then the second level engineering staff, they are, they are all fine, super. But what is happening is the people who are painting, welding. Now, when you come to that level, there is a big issue. 
because maybe due to some economic problem from the grade eight, he left school and started helping the mother with some job. So he, he goes to a, a construction site and do welding. So after 10 years, he's an expert welder. But what about the, the vocational training for him? So welding, we know the vocational training authority has some uh, good uh, courses. But this corrosion, there is no courses even in the VTA. So either from grade six level, people should be taught what to do with the corrosion. Or in the A level, there should be a subject. Or universities, that level, that there should be a subject. Or somebody should do a, a, a PhD on that. Some research on that. So what will happen to the dropouts? Because finally, with that company organization, the top level are all qualified. But the, the levels where these people are painting and welding and fabricating, now they don't have the opportunity to, to learn. So I feel there's a big gap. And, and also, like, now I, I know now, for instance, uh, certain government organization will give, uh, call for tenders and give it to Chinese or some OCS party to construct. So we don't know the, those Chinese people whether they are qualified. But we think oh, they are OCS Petrata company. But what is happening is once the construction phase is going on, there is a lot of corrosion. Then without your knowledge, we are getting involved. Now, this is a secret. Because we have to stop that, control that corrosion. So what we say is, uh, knowledge is the most important thing in, in this uh, subject. And uh, now people say consultant. So now I have a card, visiting card, consultant. I don't know whether I'm a consultant. But I will say I'm a counsel, counselor, counselor. That is now say you are getting married and you are getting divorced. Are counseling karnani? Then eka corrosion neka teva ge vadak pila dang. But there are consultants, very few. But but what we need is there should be some now in, in the techno exhibition. There's a building clinic. So likewise, there should be a thorough uh, counseling, engineering counseling department where people can like legal advice. So I think that is lacking in this country. So. Uh, Coming back to the costs. Now, as I said, the, the NACE, NACE, I think you can find it in these banners also. NACE is very, uh, very uh, uh, recognized organization in the world. NACE is National Association Corrosion Engineers of USA. They have a lot of standards, but that standards are not going into the upper, our universities. The the corrosion control, the buildings are either steel buildings or concrete buildings. Now they are corroding. Now even concrete buildings, you find the toba is getting bloated up and cracking and staining and pieces falling off, spalling. So that is also, that's not concrete corrosion. There is concrete reinforcement by corrosion. So now there is a problem because we are surrounded by the sea. Moving water will in api. Have api hari authority ka. But America, this NACE, they have procedures, what to do, what not to do. So our, our people, now it says Sri Lanka Navy, they go to India and get NACE uh, SIP 1, SIP 2, like that. There are so many uh, uh, qualifications. So SSPC is the other party. Now they were competitors. Then one fine day, after the COVID, they knew competing each other is no good. So they merged into one department called AMPP. Now NACE is no longer there. So I, I feel the, even the Americans, they found that you can't fight, uh, you can't fight this out. You have to join and fight the corrosion. So the, the, what, they, what the NACE uh, gave a project to a company called CC Technologies, long time ago, about 10, 15 years ago. And they found, now remember that uh, six, six, seven, eight years ago, the university professors came to the road came to the road and said, they put a board. Ape adhapana na seat hayak kone. Mata kati, 6% for our education. The budget taking, seat hayak den done, GDP king. Dalajatika adhaime. 
දැන් ඒ වගේ the american those people they get, got together and try to estimate what is the percentage for the cost of corrosion relevant uh, relationship with the gdp so now it's a very uh, what you call a very very sacred benchmark so they found it was 3% early now 3.4% so now if you take american uh, uh, economy it is 2.5 trillion gdp so the cost of corrosion is 3 plus 3.4 percent of the 2.5 trillion trillion it's a billion 892 billion so it's a huge cost but this country we don't know this that we have to uh, allocate certain costs to to control this corrosion so uh, the so the nes came out with it and now the the world uh, corrosion uh, uh, organization has come out with the 3 3.4 Uh, percent so now when you are doing budgeting you can now you have a benchmark now now say american uh, gdp is 25 trillion so 3.4 of that so if you take sri lanka sri lanka our uh, gdp in 2023 was 262 billion so which means the cost of corrosion in this country if you go by the american uh, percentage it is 8.9 percent but having being a island more corrosive than america because america is very big this the oceans are only around but here sri lanka a very small country with oceans around so it's i i have a feeling it will be more than 8.9 billion but only thing nobody is interested now for education uh, 6% we can really understand but corrosion 3% we can't understand because we have no uh, sense on this so uh, we have to Uh, learn this up so you need either consultants or cons- counseling on this uh, engineering sector because when you all are doing the design for the buildings for it to survive du- durable for 25 years so what is the uh, the guidelines you are using we will be doing this now and also we have to now check the gap what is the gap because certain people know about the corrosion but the the lower level welders painters they are very bad so unless we bring this people up to that level we will fa- keep on facing with the problem so this has to go into the education system university system because what is happening is people get out from the universities as graduates and when they come into the scene then they are atharma when it comes to corrosion i can show you those corrosion that videos what you saw they are engineers who were supervising those but they didn't have the the culture to address it so therefore we need to go for that so this is the what you saw on the flyer now we are talking about the steel because if there's a corrosion there's a metal involved there's no if there's no metal there's no corrosion so now you go to uh, to the hardware or uh, before that you you take you, you uh, sit down on your engineering table and you are designing a building so you use uh, h beams i i channel i, I beams c channels all those stuff you you are, now so how do you do it you you will get a book steel book either you get from the download from the internet or good old days we had we had books in our offices so now when we look at it it says universal beams so like that there are so many pages so in that there is a chemical analysis carbon how much silicon manganese sulfur phosphorus like that it's there then 99% is steel ferrous so now if it is 99% it is steel okay that's what we know now the issue is now those are the the universal beams so you will take those data and do your structure based on those but there's a big issue now good old days they took the iron ore yapas they took the gallanguru coal they took the lime hunugal they brought it to 2200 degree centigrade and melted it after that they poured it into a billet you would have seen the, all these lorries coming out from the the port they are taking some square big bars those are billets 
Now billets will go to the Atrugiri and they'll make tow bar or angle line, flat tire. So from the billet only, you are getting your HIR. So many people think you take the billet, Aragana, Eka Didas is a centigrade, Unukarla, make a Chadagarati in a mold, a walker, no Kilmaitani. A baker at the city. They are taking the billet, they are not. Uh, uh, raising the temperature to 2200, they are raising it to 1200 degrees centigrade. And it becomes melt, melted. So that melted stuff, they are sending through a shape of a roller and you are getting the steel out. So if you want to have a steel plate, you take a billet or, or ingot and take two large rollers and send it through that, this billet will become a plate. plate. So now what's happening is, now, HIN, I beams, those days were extruded. Now, those are called the RSJ, rolled steel joist, RSJ. So, what when you are doing your calculations, doing your structures, you take that, that universal beam book, and if there is tensile strength, yield stress, moment of inertia, elongation, you take this information, and then you do your structure. But what is happening is, these days, they are no longer making universal beams. Now what they do is, instead of making the universal beam from the extruded, what they do is, they take steel plates, say 20 foot by 5 foot, cut into 1 foot sections, and keep one like that, one like that, one like that, and weld it. So now what you get in the market is not RSJs. You are getting is welded beams. Now, the strength of the welding, welded beam is different to the RSJ. So, what, you, what is happening is, the RSJ has a moment of inertia in, the, in, the, in, the, in that list. But the welded beam, it is welded by somebody else. Steel is, plate is manufactured by the mill. It is cut into places and welded by somebody. Like even in dockyard, we have a Modera site. We are making the welded beams now. So now that strength-wise, it is different. And you all do the calculation on the RSJ data. Whereas finally, when you go to the market to buy the steel, you can't get the RSJ, you are getting the welded beam. So there's a big problem there also. And also, unlike those days, they are not using now the yapas, the iron ore, they are using the scrap steel. There are all these scrap is going, and they are... Uh, mel mel melting it and then making uh, billets with the scrap steel. So there are other issues as well. So what is happening when you go to the market? Now I went to the market. I didn't know about my about this. What I did was I went to the market and took the uh, mill certificates. Now you go to modern hardware or wherever you are going and say, sir, what are they mill certificate then? Then when you look at the mill certificate only, you know what is the grade. You can't just uh, touch a yakade and say this is that grade. So now with the steel, if the steel has a punch number, that number should be available on the certificate. Then it's, it's related. But what is happening is the certificate is 15 years old. You are getting something else because you also don't know what to check. Anyway, so now... Uh, I went to the Sri Lanka standards. I went to Sri Lanka standards and I said, uh, I want to uh, know what is the approved steel for Sri Lanka. So you go to the fourth floor, you have to buy, pay some 250 bucks or something, very cheap. So I got a booklet. So I, I went through, I, I found something funny. I can say funny. Now, if you take a rubber band and you stretch it and you release it, it comes to the same point. It's elastic. You stretch again, it comes to the same place. It's elastic. But after you do it for 100 times, 200 times, it won't come to that point. It will be ex extended. So the plastic, elastic has become a plastic. That turning, breaking point is called the yield stress. So all steel has a yield point, which is 355 MPA, which, which, which we have said there, 355 MPA. 
So in, 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 in the case side, the Americans, there's a 52 case side. It's the same. It's a, uh, uh, tra tra translated backwards. So what's happening is, now, um, so uh, what I did was I went through the uh, British books, American books, German books, uh, European books, Japanese books, and I found, okay, what are the steel which can be imported to Sri Lanka? So then I found BS4360 grade 50A can be brought. ASTM 5, American Standard ASTM 572 grade 50 can be brought to Sri Lanka. It's allowed. Because what is happening when you bring the steel, the customs will say, go to Sri Lanka Standard and get the approval that it is okay with the SLS Standard and then only they can release it. So you can't just go and import whatever you want. You have to get down what the SLS is setting the standard. So then DIN 17,000, ST52. S, uh, that's the German standard. S355 JG2 is European standard. Japanese G31 3101 SS500 is a Japanese standard. CNQ is Chinese, Indian, I forgot to put it. Anyway, so different, different uh, people will make different, different, uh, different mills will make different steel. But the standards have something common. That is, you can ask for yield stress of 355 MPE or 52 case side. So what's happening is the standards have these, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, they, they have these uh, numbers. Now, grade 50A means 52 case side, yield stress. Now, if you go for S355 JG2, it is a MPA number. So you can see the relevance that what is happening on the mill certificate what is the particular country manufacturing or standard used, that number, and we can relate to the yield stress. That's how it is done. So then I went to the market again. When I came to the market, when I asked people, give me mill certificate and what are the products, none of the hardware shops have 355. Now, this is a peculiar situation. Now, Sri Lanka standard says 355, and custom says if you don't get approval from the SLS, we are not clearing it. Send it back to the country. But what is happening is you have a situation still available in the market. So, so when you are doing the design, you will so the, since SLS has recommended the minimum 355, all the buildings will be done as per 355. But when you give the make the BOQ and after the 10 days call, then the contract is awarded to the contractor, whoever. And when he goes to the market to buy the steel, there is no shop in the Colombo to uh, sell 355 MPA yield stress. So it was a very uh, shocking situation. So how did all the steel imported to Sri Lanka when it is not Approved by the SLS. Without SLS, you can't bring in. What has come here doesn't comply with SLS. So I also happen to uh, have this problem because when, when we are importing, we have to get, we have to, the cost will be lo lower. I mean, 355 cost is uh, higher than the 235 uh, steel. So one day a Singaporean came, Singaporean came. He said, I want to sell some uh, angle irons. I said, okay. I said, come here, 355, otherwise you go. Because the SLS is not approving it. If you bring it, they have to send it back. He said, okay. He said, I'll give you a solution. I said, what is the solution? Okay, you order angle irons and C channels in the 355 JG2 20-foot container full load. Sorry, sorry. Uh, he said, import the 235, that one. The lower yield stress, uh, they said, they'll quote for not for 355, for 235. So I said, then SLS will reject it. I can't clear it. He said, no problem. I will send the container full load. I'll also give you three pieces of one meter long, 355 pieces. You go to the SLS and go to the lab and get it tested. Then you clear it. Now, it's a funny situation Sri Lanka has. If I'm wrong, you go to the SLS and check up. 
in sri lanka you can't import less than 355 but all the shops are having 235 so my my why i'm telling this is not to disgrace the sls so there is something happening no i mean actually sls should go to the custom take a angle out cut a one meter length and test it and reject it now what they are doing is all the bazaar people the hardware bazaar people they are very good people so they will bring the 235 full load at a lower cost and then uh, uh, and then they that container has three pieces of one meter long so they'll take it to the sls give it and because i saw it they, they kept coming at a lunch at a quarter because that's the situation here my 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 concern is not that now you all are uh, uh, designing your building for the 355 but what is available in the market is 235 now how can this happen how can the buildings come as for well sls or oh, sls what they should do is they should lower the 355 to the 235 in their status book so that's okay then then we are legally bringing now the issue is Luckily, when I speak to engineers, they say, no, Felix, no, no, we are putting a higher safety factor. So that is also okay. <laughs> now, if it is 10 millimeter, I'm putting 13 millimeter. So you all have some funny way of uh, designing your buildings. But only thing, Sri Lanka actual situation is what I'm talking. If I'm wrong, please go to the SLS and you find that what I'm telling is the truth. So as I said, now that particular uh, is not extruded. It is welded now. It is welded. So uh, when you are doing your uh, structures designing, do it for the welded beams. Unless you can find the RSJ. If you can import it specially for that project, that's good. So uh, we know that uh, engineers look for uh, high quality material, uh, anti-rust, uh, corrosion resistance, high structural compensation, blah, blah. There's so many things. So, uh, okay. Now we come to the uh, current day context on the metal structures in Sri Lanka and especially in Colombo. Now what you can see is the uh, cinnamon life, keels, waterfront. Now it's a complete uh, reinforced concrete building, but there are so many steel parts. Now if you, if you, if you look at this, uh, that, that this one is a bridge. It's a steel bridge. Now, uh, they, that was done by the Spanish. Spanish people, they did the steel there in, uh, in Spain. And then they put it into the uh, parts. Components were done, put it into the container and went to Matakulia. So Matakulia, there was a yard, they unloaded it. Then before the, 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 the bridge was to be welded and bolted and etc., they found it is corroding. Now the bridge is not even installed, not erected. But the bridge parts are corroding. So luckily, uh, engineer Shiromal Fernando's company, he, they were there. So they contacted Mr. Aruna. So Mr. Aruna went and did some testing and they found he found that it is not complying the Sri Lanka standard. There's no Sri Lanka standard. Sri Lanka environment because as i was talk, talking earlier now european people now they know they have see italy say uh, greece now they have a madhidharani mood mediterranean sea now we have an indian ocean Lunuhulaga. now they don't know Lunuhulaga ocean so their designing is on the madhidharani mood so environment is not recognized. They don't know Sri Lanka properly, that we are an island. They don't know this. So unless you all are capable of understanding that issue, you will be getting an incorrect item. Now, for example, I'll tell you, uh, in 2015, we did a CPD program for the ISL MSC. Now, we, I, we were giving, both of us were giving the lecture and there was a gentleman, very nice gentleman, who was sitting there every day, all eight days he came. And there were two other guys on the other side. 
But those two are shouting and asking. So we gave the answers. On the last day, the that two gentlemen came to us and said, I'm Bandula, this is Ranjit. We have a railway department. So I asked, what is your problem? No, we have a big problem. I said, what is your problem? No, because we are getting package from India, from Austria, from France, package, bridges. Now, when they come, we put it to the Bentota, we put it to the Maggona, we put it to the Pola to Modera. All those bridges are corroding. So I said, what do you think is the problem? I don't know this corroding. So we have a lot of issues. We, have, we can't take over. We have, can't pay the money to that uh, line of credit because it's all uh, the transport ministry will get a line of credit, Indian line of credit or whatever. So then this that gentleman who was on the right hand side came and said, I'm Vijay Singh, I'm a DGM CCB. So we, the, both of them had the same problem. So we asked Mr. Bandula, what is your problem? No, we are going to Belgium, we are flying to Belgium to bring another set of bridges. Then by that time, I, I have given you a piece of paper, one page. Now, that is the ISO 12944 standard. So, we uh, explained to them what is, is ISO 12944, which is a, which we are going to do it in little, a little, little while. Uh, we said this is the environment classification. This is the thickness of the paint to be approved by the ISO. So, uh, he, he understood and there was an issue. The Indian line of credit uh, they have given a big loan to Sri Lanka because after the LTT uh, war, from Madhavachya to uh, Talemannar and Madhavachya to Kankasanthure, all the railway lines were off. So the Indians came and installed all the railway lines, tracks, stations, those uh, lighting, all the gadgets they installed. Indian, but it is not free. We have to pay to the Indian government after 10 years or whatever. So it is not free, not a grant. So then, uh, this Mr. Vijay Singh and Mr. Bandula said, we have a big problem. Irkon is the company, Indian railway company, a very big company in India. They are, they are given the money as a loan. But now, they have finished the job. But we can't accept it. Because Thalemanna, everything is corroding. Kankasantra is corroding. Elephant Pass is corroding. So I, did, I said, then don't pay. No, we can't. We, it's a government to government. No. You, can't, you can't say, I can't pay also now. Then Bandula or somebody has to sign, then he'll get caught. So between the devil and the deep blue. So he said, what can I do? He said, okay. Uh, we told uh, DGM, CCB, that okay. Give us a chance to give a half a day lecture at the auditorium with the IRCON. So uh, Till that time, Irkon said, no, it is not our mistake. It is some other thing. Corrosion is falling. But we don't take responsibility. We have done according to the BOQ. So if the BOQ is wrong, so what happened is that per pa particular paper on your hand is the BOQ guideline. So before, before the bridge is uh, sent to Sri Lanka, you have to check with the that overseas parties whether the thickness of the paint and all the other things are complying the Sri Lanka standard, Sri Lanka environmental standard. So what happened? Uh, we got a chance, 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock, we did a big lecture. Irkon came with four people, big engineers, and they are very uh, stubborn people. I mean, Indi you know, Indians are very proud people, not stubborn, pr proud people. So at 12.30, at we stopped it. That GM came and said, Felix, uh, we want to help. So, because we thought uh, when, at the starting point, they looked at us as we were like Hathuru. Because I mean, we, are, we don't know anything. They know everything. That's what they thought. But they didn't know that Sri Lanka is an island. We are surrounded by the ocean. Whereas India, only the coast is on the side. The Middle East, Delhi railway stations, they don't corrode much. Because the environment is mild. So they go by the Delhi standard environment and put uh, our railway stations as by Delhi. So Delhi or Mannarama or whatever, if there's a standard to follow, like the paper what I have given you, you should be able to use that and say, okay, my environment is this. I need this 320 microns. If you look at that paper, it says 320 microns. 
Now, what has happened is Delhi has only 150 microns as per their standard. That is not enough for our country. So after that, we, 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 we did a business deal. We, we sold a lot of marine paint and we solved the problem. And finally, railway department and the CCB got together and they paid the Indian party because they corrected. The retention was not released until the correction had come. But what I say is, without waiting for the retention clearance, from the original BOQ, if you can clear your corrosion design, then you don't have a problem to release the money. It's good for the country also because it is our country. We have a particular C5 category. We will be doing it. So what we say is, so like this uh, bridge components, they were reblasted, repainted, and then installed. So Sp Spanish guy had two costs. One is to blasting painting in Spain and sending the material. Second one, after seeing the corrosion, they reblasted, repainted 320 microns or 320 microns, 400 microns. This is 320 is the minimum uh, uh, DFT microns uh, shown there. And then everybody's happy. Now no corrosion. So, so what we are saying, now we are being sponsored by the uh, galvanizing company. Now these people are very truthful people. So what they, as you saw in the that video, uh, you take a steel, you first degrease it, then rinse it with water, then acid pickling, then rinsing, rinsing water rinsing, then you put it in the flux solution, and then you dry it and put it to the molten zinc. This is the galvanizing process. I think uh, 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 more than me, those gentlemen who are here know uh, to explain it better. But this is what is in the internet. And I think what they showed also, I think the degreasing, if I'm not mistaken, the, the caustic cleaning now is stopped due to some safety issue, I think. So they are doing some other thing. Anyway, so after doing this, there is another issue now. Now, what's the issue? Now, if you ask them, they will tell you, okay, we degrease it, rinse it, pickling, acid pickling, rinsing, fluxing, and dipping into a 450 degree centigrade molten sink. That's what will they, they tell you. So, if you take a 6 millimeter plate, I, I sent you a, sm a small steel plate, that's about 6 millimeter. Now, that is 6 millimeter means, uh, that, that, yeah. Or eight millimeter or whatever, that is eight thousand microns. One millimeter equals thousand microns. So you have a steel piece which is eight thousand microns, but your zinc layer is only eighty microns. So that is enough. I'm not grumbling. That's what they are putting. But when you go into the market, they will tell you Pakistan's GI Batatina, sir. They come with various other things. And you think, okay, galvanizing butter. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, LTL galvanizers give you 80 microns. Okay, this also might be having that. So we are now assuming things. But the issue is, all those square bars, those C purlins, those lip channels, those decking plates, what you are using, they are not hot dip galvanized. They are called pre-galvanized. Now, people don't know this. Now, as we said, that process, if you have a 8 millimeter plate and you put it into a 450 degree centigrade tank, the hot will not affect the steel because it's 8 millimeter. But the issue is your C purlins, your decking plates, your lip channels, your square bars, your square pipes, uh, tubes. Now, those are made with 1.2 millimeter steel. So, if you put the square bar into a square tube into a 450 degree centigrade that uh, bath, the whole thing will warp up. So, therefore, you can't use the same thing. So, what they are doing is they are taking the, now these all th these things are with a 1 millimeter coil. It's a coil. It's a big coil, which is, say, three meter wide. 
they will take that coil and dip it into the 450 degree centigrade zinc molten tank. But they just put it and take it. They don't keep it for a long time because the plate will get warped up. So that is called not galvanizing, that is called pre-galvanizing. Pre-galvanizing. So what you do is pre-galvanizing, you are getting only 20 microns. If you if you take the sepal in or deck, deck uh, this uh, this uh, lip channels, and I'll show you. I have a, a thickness gauge. It will show you that it's, it has only twenty microns. So what is happening is that you have a sheet a coil which is dipped into the pre galvanizing process, which is only getting twenty microns, and then you take the sheet and cut into four inch pieces strips. Then four inch strip. You make one inch, one inch, one inch, and make a square one inch. So you have one inch square pipe, square tube. Now that one, after you bend it into four, one side you are welding it. That sink is burnt off. Then they use ZRC and put a small strip and cover it. And inside, they are having a gadavilla and a kubia to take a ZRC and go and spray and cup. You understood? Now outside, you and I can take a spray and put a spray, you no. Know? But inside, how are you going to send a kumbia with a spray can? That means it is not treated at all. So you have to really understand pre-galvanized square bar, square bar tubes, there is one line which is not treated inside. Because your process is different. Your sheet is pre-galvanized and then cut into strips and bend it to four sides and make a square. And only outside they will put the ZRC, it's increased uh, coating. So therefore, uh, now this is the, I think the LTL galvanizing will have a better picture than me. Uh, you know, that, like if you look at the, the now we think, 8 millimeter plate, 8,000 microns, has a 80 microns of zinc. 80 over 8,000. So thin, like an onion peel. It's so thin. But that is enough. That is more than enough for the protection. I agree. But what about the 20 microns pre-galvanizing? No, that is not enough. That is why you, when you do sea purlins in the marine drive houses, it is corroding. Because the thickness is not enough. So what we say is you have to uh, uh, realize, understand what you are going to purchase from the market. Are you getting a hot dip galvanized 80 micron stuff or a pre-galvanized 20 or 15 micron sink layer? So now this is the 80 microns. You can see that uh, now this uh, base steel, uh, what is happening is, uh, is 100% ferrous. Then if you take a cross-section, they, they have made, mentioned gamma, delta, zeta, eta. The eta has 100% zinc. But the marriage point, kasadabandina point, yakadai zinc, 75% zinc, 25% ferrous. So it is having a not a very homogeneous cross-section, but different, different levels. So now what we did was, uh, we went to school. Uh, we did... Uh, Electrolysis. We took a beaker, we put a cathode, we put an anode, we connected to a connection, voltmeter or something, and we put an electrolyte. So this is called the ACME theory. ACME theory. A means anode, C means cathode, E means electrolyte. M means metallic pathway. Now that gentleman asked me before I, before I came here, if I, if I put an anode to a Yakata cathode, will it protect? So he said he has some good result. But theoretically, I can't understand because there is no electrolyte. You need to have electrolyte. So what's happening is there should be anode and a cathode. 
So now take, if you take this uh, steel yakade, you have a yakade, so you will give somebody, uh, make a mitigation thalala, welding karpa. So that guy will, that his job is to weld. So he will weld it. Welding means the temperature is 800 degrees centigrade. Stressing. So it's called stress corrosion. Now after welding, it cools off. Most probably. Is definitely, certainly, most certainly. But only thing, in the steel fabricated building, on the welding point or cutting point or bending point, there's a stress. So that is called an anodic site. It's a weak. H A is a heat affected zone. Heat affected zone. When you're welding, 800 degrees centigrade. So that point becomes an anode. So that is why when you go to certain buildings and when you find certain areas, it is corroding and pitting, hard now. Now, if you know ferrous, oxygen, jalavashpa, malakada. Now, that's the formula what we learned. That's all we know. If you have a low hair yakada, if you have a oxygen vata, jalavashpa, you get a malakada. Now, that theory is correct. But to explain this corrosion, pitting corrosion, stress corrosion, you can't be satisfied with chemistry. You have to be learning electrochemistry. Now, in A-levels or in, even in the universities, electrochemistry, I don't know whether I did even. Electrochemistry is ACME theory. Anode, cathode, Vidutichedake, metallic pathway. All four should be fulfilled for it to work. Now, if you, if you look at this one, now if you look at this uh, zinc, that Nyasche is there, there is a shortage of two electrons. If you look at the ferrous Nyasche here, shortage of two electrons. So what oxygen does is, now ferrous and uh, zinc are, uh, not nice to say, uh, pyramid, males. Oxygen is female. So oxygen has two electrons to give out. So ferrous needs two electrons. So they will marry. Now when they marry, it becomes ferrous oxide, malakada. So it is, we have to prevent Oxygen getting married to oxygen, sorry, to ferrous. So ferrous oxide is brown color. Zinc oxide is white color, white rust. So what now people do, they marry male to male. Summer lacrimator. <laughs> so you have zinc and ferrous. But you, you, you marry this through an electrolyte. So when you, when you look at the, this chart, now, magnesium is there, zinc is there, ferrous comes, there's a gap, which means there's a good vibhavantare. So, zinc becomes anodic, ferrous becomes cathodic. And there's a enough potential difference. And when you put an electrolyte into the job, the electrons will start, the anode will become sacrificed. Now, my mother became an anode. I became a cathode. My mother sacrificed her to protect the son. So that's why I'm saying I'm a cathode. Now my son is a cathode, I'm an anode again. So I mean, a bad example, but uh, try to see the, what is sacrification. So now to show the sacrification, now you can see a ship. The dockyard, we uh, repair ships. Now that uh, particular uh, area, we put about... Uh, 400 microns, 400 microns. That is called the first line of defense. First line of defense. The cathodic protection is the second line of defense. So they are putting the uh, hull with the rudder, everything. They are putting uh, 300 microns of uh, paint to the underwater. In addition, what they do is... Now, in addition, 
Now, this anode is fixed onto the hull. That anode is fixed onto the hull. Now, after two years, the sacrificed anode is the other one. That way, you are protecting the steel cathode. Air. But to do that, the ship is running in the seawater. That's the electrolyte. So, as, is, as we said, to have this going, there should be a cathode. Cathode is the hull. Zinc anode. The anode is a zinc. You fix it with nuts or bolt and uh, weld welding. Then you have, if you keep the ship upside without putting it to the sea water, there is no electrolyte. So anode will just wait like that. But the, no sooner the anode that the ship is going underwater sea water, you your your current start running now. Electrons start moving around. Then what happens is your anode will sacrifice. The cathode will protect. So that is called the cathodic protection. Now, similarly, you have a GI button. LTL galvanizers will give you a galvanized uh, structure, H beam. And you go and fix it into the C side. Galvanized, no, no problem, no. I mean, we are very happy. After galvanizing, we don't need any other protection. But if you look at the Galvanizing Association banner, they are telling duplex coatings. They are very truthful. Only thing you don't understand what they are talking. Duplex coatings means you can't keep the zinc exposed to the environment. You have to protect the zinc. That is called duplex coating. So what they are telling is, okay, you come to us, you purchase, uh, give us the steel, we will galvanize it and we will give it to you. You go and fix it in the port city. Don't. You do the duplex coating. That is, you have to apply a paint coat. Now, if you look at the, the, the paper what I have given you, if you look at the C4 category, C4 category, now basically what that paper tell you is, now I am sitting on an AC room, um, the I am sweating but the AC is pulling it out now if the AC goes off I am sweating that means I am a live person otherwise I, I am sweating every day so this is called a C1 classified, classified environment C1 now if you go to the Dinia area Norel area that is called C2 Gramia Parasare the C3 means Nagarika Parasare, urban areas. C5M is port city, golf face, marine drive. So C5M is a sea coastal environment. And what this ISO 12944 people are telling after the research, now if you take a 1 meter long, 1 meter wide, 25 millimeters thick plate, 1 meter, 1 meter, 25 millimeter. Now, if you want to know the weight, I don't know much about it, but my friend told me uh, 1 meter into 1 meter over 25 millimeter into 7.85 density. So, you know, 81 kilos, or you can measure it. So, now you take that uh, 1 meter, 1 meter uh, uh, and go to the uh, golf face, Mudaine, Dala, you go home. After one year, you go and take it and measure. According to the ISO 12944, 1, 1.5 kilograms deterioration. I'm not telling. ISO has done the research. So, I last time I went to Putlam and I did a lecture and I told him, you go to the Kalpitya uh, Muda and put a one meter, one meter yakade, and you after one year come back and tell me the weight. Is it what Badu Nay Usangila Kurukari? One point five kilos, there can be a deterioration. So this is for you um, for, for for your design purposes. You are, you have to think if a steel stay for one year in the C5M category, there will be a deterioration. 
So what you do is you take uh, that one, take to the Lanka transform, uh, galvanizing, and you get a 80 microns of zinc layer. You are happy. Now you put it to the C side. When the C breeze come and hit that, your electrolyte is introduced now. There's a fine moisture film of Mudulaga. So you have Yakada in the middle ferrous cathode air. You have a sink layer around it, anode air. And your Mudulaga Lunu is with the Chedak air. And your metallic pathway is fully connected now. Fully connected. If you look at this, so this that's a ferrous. That's your sink. So there's nothing to connect now. It's all connected now. So if you have a that yellow colored uh, uh, Mudu Vadila had then an electrolyte taking, you will get the sacrification of the zinc. So that is why C4 category, they tell you for zinc, you have to apply du duplex coating of 240 microns. So if you have a misconception that after galvanizing, it can be withstanding in the seaside, that's a misconception. Because ISO is telling, not only ISO is telling, galvanizing association in the magazines are also telling it. Now, if you, if, if you look at what I'm showing you now, where is it? Okay, now this is 80 microns. Somewhere here. Now you are you are you are installing a steel galvanized steel building in C2 category. That is Dini Aya. So 50 years, no problem. 80 microns in C2 category. 50 years, no issue. You don't have to paint at all. But from C3. You are getting a cutoff point here. 35 years. If you don't paint. But it can be fast accelerated sacrification if, if the corrosivity is very high. But if that 80 microns, 80 microns uh, is kept in the mood, maximum is seven years. But if you take the pre-galvanized steel, 20 microns, you are getting, after two years, all gone, sacrificed. So this chart is a fantastic chart to me. This is done by the Galvanizing Association World. In their magazine, they are showing it. Showing it. So we, we have to respect them because they are telling the truth. They are telling the truth. They are telling you, if it is 80 microns, C2 category, no relia, it will withstand. But if it is C5 category, seven years. But if it is pre galvanized with the 20 microns of zinc, it is only maybe six months, seven months, eight months gone. I can show you some photographs if I have time. It is happening. So you can't have a, a situation where you galvanize everything and say, okay, we have done it, it will protect. That's why they are telling here duplex coating. Duplex coating means zinc layer, paint layer, both duplex. So it is told not only by the galvanizing people, but also the ISO, that ISO chart in your, in your hand. Is also Actually, this is 1998 uh, version. I have given you that page. Now, in 2018, they came out with a new uh, standard. Now, in that one, C, not C4, C2 also need to be protected. Because they, they have researched and found they have, uh, they, they have done a blunder in the 1998 version. So, we can share the, the in fact, if you are coming for CPT program, we will give you that uh, page also. Uh, for easy uh, explanation only, I have uh, told you that. So, basically, you have the anode and anode is sacrificing now and it is gone. But we have sent you that. So, the, the learning point is, galvanizing is not final. 
it is good i'll tell you why it is good a lot of people come to me because i am a pain seller felix uh, i want to galvanize it okay go ahead why no i want to do, go ahead it's good you have money do it if you if i don't do it then we have to other alternatives you have to sandblast sandblast oh you have to sandblast so they are thinking now because there is a problem in the country misconception i will we'll tell you later on so now this is that sink cannot after uh, five years that's a sink remaining sink sacrificed so that's the ship so coming back to the our, our basic definitions we tell you that if the air is there the moisture is there sorry air is there the moisture is there the steel is there so it says deteriorative loss of a metal as a result of environmental reaction that is your definition you go to the internet you can find it i don't have to tell you so now when we come we have modern science their technological advances advancements latest innovations are artificial in intelligence but the problem is corrosion doesn't have any advance but all the other things have gone far ahead malakade monada thiyenne me artificial intelligence ekey mukadda karanna puluwa gela mata theriyidde api etanamai bildi mada gatti akade hada ganna abe athule weda karana gatte ai weda karana ोटल then also i found that near, there are new scientists the names are not very famous but when it comes to yakada malakada metals and rusting we don't know much about the scientists or the pioneers or the fathers but since we know that during the uh, industrial uh, revolution steel was manufactured there was a guy called the henry bessemer now henry bessemer came out with a system called bos basic oxygen steel making process bos so he started this yapas saragana hunugal dala me galla guru dala 2018 ushnatter centigrade rat karala lodiya karala wak karala billet hadana ka thamai ya kare etra ita passe stainless steel hadua me harry brayley william kelly robert forrestella e wak kara ebe malakada corrosion if you look at the we don't know anybody you only know felix eka dannetre Oh, but there are people: Kaval, Ro, Kurt, Schwabe, Guy, Beno, Dieter. Be There's so many other people we don't know. Now, what I want to say is, we know this Galileys. We don't know much about the new scientists. But now, this lady, that that corner lady, she's done on black holes. Black hole, me, Kalu. So there is one guy who is called the father of the corrosion science. his name is uh, ulik richardson evans from uk i don't know whether he came from migrate kala danne now his subject is called electrochemistry now we think chemistry ferrous oxygen jalavashpa malakada but the father malakada vidya ve pietuma minya vidyut prasan vidya karupine ඒක මාරයි ඉතින්. එතන මොකද මං කියවන්නේ දැන් ඉලෙක්ට්‍රොකෙමිස්ට්‍රි කරන්න නැතුව මේ කොරෝෂන් එකෙන් ඉගෙන ගන්න බෑ අපිට. එක්ස්ප්ලේන් කරගන්න බෑ. මොකද ඇනෝඩික් සයිට් එක තියෙන්න ඕනේ, කැතෝඩික් සයිට් එක තියෙන්න ඕනේ, විද්‍යුත් විච්ඡේදකයේ තියෙන්න ඕනේ, මෙටලික් පාත්‍රය එක තියෙන්න ඕනේ. හතර වැඩ කරොත් තමයි අර හැර් වෙන්නේ. කොරෝෂන් වෙන්නේ. ඒක නිසා මේ ඉලෙක්ට්‍රොකෙමිකල් කොරෝෂන් කියලා අපි කියනවා නමුත් ඉස්සෙල්ලා අපි කියන කොරෝෂන් නැචුරල් ප්‍රොසෙස් දැට් කන්වර්ට්ස් ද රිෆයින්ඩ් මෙටල් ඉන්ටු අ මෝ කෙමිකලි ස්ටේබල් ෆෝම් කියලා තමයි කිව්වේ. දැන් මේක තමයි ACME තියරි කියලා අපි කියන්නේ. එතකොට දැන් අපි we are we are taking a zinc and very soon it becomes white rust very soon it becomes brown rust so the zinc 
will first have sacrification with the white rust, zinc, zinc oxide formation. After the zinc oxide, now you say, I am the minister, Mr. Arun is the bodyguard. Now he is protecting me. So I shoot the fellow. Then somebody will shoot me. I have to protect my bodyguard. So, steel is there, zinc layer is there, zinc layer will have to be protected by duplex coatings. So, that is a must, which we are not very well aware. And one of the major problem is on the GI butte, when you are applying paint, it peels off. So, this is like uh, staining, staining has started. Okay, now this is a funny situation. This is the actual situation. The Maldives government was given by the Chinese government a thing called a friendship bridge. Now, everything free of charge. So now, uh, after six months, it is corroding. The friendship is corroding now. Now, big issue. So somebody went there and kept a DFT gauge and found it is only 30 microns. Now, we know galvanizing company gives you 80 microns. So this is a pre-galvanized steel. The Chinese, as usual, they were very good friends. If those people were scientists, Chinese engineering, then they would have used a 80 micron section. But they gave a 30 micron section and now they are telling, now the Maldive government also don't want to get upset with the Chinese also, so they are, that's okay, corrosion, they are happy with the corrosion. So that is also nice. So now, we come to a thing called the corrosion prevention. Corrosion prevention. Now, this is not my thing. This is all in the internet. So, if you want to prevent the corrosion, you have to use one or more of these uh, items. The first one is called the environmental modification. You have to modify the environment. I don't know how they are doing it. Okay. Metal selection. Now, that we understand. If you take a steel with a lot of extra chromium, extra nickel, extra manganese, extra molybdenum, then you are getting stainless steel. So, metal selection, if you do it with this uh, stainless steel, it is much better than steel. Expensive. But you can select a good raw material. There are certain uh, areas where you have to use 316L, whatever stainless steel. Then cathodic protection. As we said, that's anode cathode cryovalia, it will happen. Then corrosion inhibitors, like the boilers, like the cooling towers, the water is running, they put treatment chemicals. Otherwise, it will corrode. Then coatings, that's my job. I'm a paint seller. I'm very happy to do that. Okay. Then plating. Plating means uh, galvanizing, electroplating, pre-galvanizing, all those. So that was all given in the internet to prevent the corrosion. These are the subjects. So, we can talk every topic two hours. But what Mr. Aruna says is all these points are useless if knowledge doesn't come in. So, we are very ha happy that our chairman MESC has given us a chance to upgrade the knowledge because without the knowledge factor, all these preventive met methods won't work. So now we will talk about, we said first one is uh, environmental modification. I will give a good example. Now I uh, will tell names, okay, no problem. Uh, Kingsbury Hotel, they were near the seaside. So they were buying a lot of paints. Good business. We are very happy with them. So in 2012, they don't come to us now. So I called them and said, uh, sir, you are angry at me. Why, why? You are not buying the paint, no? No, we don't need it now. I said, what do you mean? No, the Port City came now. We are not near the sea now. Now, Port City became C5. The Kingsbury became a C4. So, environmental modification. I mean, it can every day happen. But there are things like this. Now, for instance, uh, you take a C channel. Okay. Now, now, according to the ISO, you have to put 280 microns. 
So what you do is you put 280 microns on all sides, or all, all sides. Then the water will fill up during the rain. Then if you look at the chart, it is called IM1. Below the chart, there's a thing called C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, IM1, IM2, IM3. IM1 means fresh water immersion. IM2 means sea water immersion. So now you all have had a building with a sea channel facing upside. Then the rain came, it filled up. Then that is not C5M, it is IM1 now. So if you can make a drain hole and put this water down, then you can modify that environment. From IM1 back to C5M. So your 280 micron is enough. But if you are not putting a, a, a drain hole, you have to flow see that, okay, this channel looking upwards will get filled up with water and because I, I am one, so I'm going to put 350 microns as per the ship's hull. So this is designing. Now, when you are doing your uh, uh, building structure specifications, drawings and things, we see that it says first quote is uh, 50 microns, second quote. So somebody copied from somewhere. But what they should have done was saying the structure should be uh, protected with the ISO 12944 C5 category, total uh, DFT 320 microns. Then you are covered. So without saying that, uh, if, you do, if you don't think those micro level environmental issues like water retaining points, uh, uh, welding welded points, welded points are very corrosive. So you have to add, put additional uh, uh, Code. So this is what uh, we are talking about, that what you have in the hand. Now C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, IM1 is there in your paper. Uh, so what this ISO is telling, but don't take it because the 1998 version, we will give the 20, 2018 version when the CPD starts, or you can just uh, go to the internet and buy the thing. We have some pirated uh, copies, <laughs> of course. Anyway, for knowledge, it's okay, no sir? For knowledge, you can do pirating, no problem. So uh, basically, uh, so 320 microns. But if it is water retaining point, you have to put 450 microns. So you have micro environments in your building. So you have to always address it in that fashion. So now I put uh, Sri Lanka map and put C1, C4, C2. I just want to put it like, okay. Now, uh, I sent you a steel plate. I don't know whether... Oh, now, maybe some people have already followed our uh, lectures. Now, uh, can anybody tell... Did you see any rust in that? Oh, the me akade. Ugulu, malakata dak kata. That way. Ugulu, awane da. Yakade amurane da gulat. Eke malakata dak kata ugulu. Oh, it's then the end of Kumal Lama should go to I hospital. Again, a pain a pressure theory. I hospital are a brain hospital. The May Yakade see it a see at Malgardino. That plate is hundred percent corroded because that is called the mill scale rust. When the manufacturing of the steel is happening, the, the normal. Our formula is ferrous oxygen, uh, H2O, ferrous oxide. Now that is the temperature at ambient temperature. But the steel is manufacturing, it goes to 1100 degrees centigrade. Steel manufacturing. At that point, the hot steel plus oxygen plus moisture is not ferrous oxide. It is called ferrosoferic oxide. We will tell you more in the CPD. The blue rust is 100% corroded. So if you look at this plate, the blue rust is about 60%. The brown rust is about 40%. So by looking at it, it is 100%. There is no steel in the world which is 0% or 40% or 60% or... It is all 100%. Only thing, what happened was, we went to the... Uh, uh, A-levels, we did A-level, we did chemistry. Why did we do chemistry? To pass the exam. 
to pass the exam. So coming into the engineering field and trying to solve problems, that passing exam doesn't help you here. So the, the steel, uh, steel is silver color. If you take the steel and cut it, silver. So steel is silver color. So that plate what we sent you is not silver color. It is a blue color, which is ferrous of aic oxide, Fe3O4. We learned Fe3O4, but we don't know the color of that. Our teachers didn't teach us that. The ferrous oxide, ferric oxide, brown color. Fe3O4, ferrous of aic oxide is blue color. It's called the mill scale. So if you don't know your mill scale, then you will say, Sudhakaran don't know it. Malagarane. Now, electrochemistry will tell you something else. The blue rust is cathodic. The silver ferrous is anodic. Therefore, the blue rust will corrode the steel. You have to remove that. Because when, when, you, when you look at the steel, I, I'll show you this. Uh, yeah, I'll show you. Now, okay. Now, now that's why in, in Dockyard, we are doing... Uh, Oh, oh. Then, what make How to run that? I'm gonna make it in me. And you want to work at a lot of pain, and we can get on later. Even. Oh, you discard it. You go back. Yeah, very good. Okay, now it's up. Huh? Yeah, okay. Now this is sandblasting. Why you are sandblasting is because uh, We are removing the main scale now. Okay, we will we do the time factor now. Now we'll talk about what is happening within five minutes. I'm going to stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yes. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Yeah, we have the skyline with a lot of buildings coming up. Then we have coastline, C5M, Marine Drive. And we have radial gates and things, the dam gates, water uh, with water uh, immersion. So in the seaside, you have sodium chloride as your electrolyte. And in the industrial area, you have sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, and sulfuric acid as the electrolyte, acid drain. And this is your putlam lakvijay. And so many things are happening. Now this warehouse, they put... Uh, they put angle lines and made a steel gate. And now they are telling this corroding, welding points are coming out. That is because they applied the paint on the mill scale. That blue colored rust, due to that only its corrosion starts. And most of these people, they think new steel, no corrosion. New steel, 100% corrosion. Perseveric oxide. So we have... Uh, this galvanized towers. Okay, now this is that hotel. After four years, corrosion started. Now they're asking what to do. We don't have money now. And now this is a large mall. Now from outside when you walk, it's a nice building. But if you go in from the inside, it's all corroded now. After four years. After four years, corrosion has taken place. Because it has not been planned properly. And people don't, because they have given it to a very large company to construct. Or even those people also don't know. So unless we, you all come to know, now this is another very tall building. Maybe you don't know where it is. Now this is all corroded, those uh, arms. And this is a hotel in Bambalapitiya. The paint is peeling off. Not even two years. The Chinese have gone off. Now they are trying to find how to correct it. So now, now this one is a wind power 
in in mana area electricity board now they have the wind turbines and they have a transmission galvanized towers from uh to andradapura we have through the jungle and most of the part is in the seaside area c5m sea breeze on the galvanizing already corroded it's not the galvanizing galvanizers issue they should have duplex coated it if it is c4 c5m you have to go for duplex coating but they didn't do it so therefore now this is a very funny situation where ms aruna got involved now the lakwijaya coal power station remember they are every day breaking no there is a issue for that issue is this is the china the china is a big country so many coal power stations they are very powerful but we have only one so now this is this area now this oh sorry now that 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 one if you take this one now that is c2 c3 area in the in the list so now the water is coming from kaha ganga hoang ho ganga yangtze kiang ganga now no corrosion in the water now what they did was chinese they took a model from that point and put it to the c5m they took the c2 power plant design and fixed at norichole so what happens all the coal carrying cranes now chinese are very happy people what they do is they look at it some corrosion coming take the paint cover it tomorrow paint uh, corrosion take the paint cover it so now if you miss aruna when we measured the thickness 1500 microns it can't corrode at all but that is all over patching up patch patchwork so after the fifth year the chinese wanted to give it to cb then mr vikram sekar was the general manager then they can't take over now lot of corrosion so finally mr aruna came into the scene he went he went his own car because he didn't want to go with a chinese vehicle because they will say like bibli type people no uh, so he went and gave a report that report cb sent to china they said yes we are it's a my mistake the chinese people in the colombo project said no it is not our mistake we have maintained it for 5 years no corrosion but the chinese engineers in china realized that it is their mistake so they agreed from the retention money and they purchased about uh, 120000 us dollar paint from me and dockyard sandblasted and painted the entire thing another couple of millions so before the china man went cb managed to recover the problem so now if you go to the next field visit if you go to the the, the cb power station the lucky j you will find the super because it is not done by, done by the chinese because chinese what they did was they sandblasting they took mud valley and did it you are putting uh, what do you call meris into the tuale because they didn't want to bring good well silica sand from north and expensive so they took the mud mud well so there so many things after that we uh, took over gave the specification and then fresh water washed and then sand blasted it then put a sink primer then put a, a sealer coat and intermediate coats etc then now it is okay now this that uh, that uh, wind wind uh, barrier thing still have a problem so uh, i think i should uh, time is up sorry i took some extra time uh, we'll leave the audience for some questions sir. yeah so any questions no yeah just for my information mm -hmm. ट इज श्रीलंका इज फॉलो बिकॉज वी आर रियली ट्रॉपिकल 
our rh retention throughout the mac ea is very high R relative humidity right so that is that is why even in painting right you are very particular about you know the control in the rh so uh, unfortunately like that when you get like even melbourne the yeah how did you know yeah Three days? No, no sweating. RH is 20. RH is 30. Now here, RH is 82. So, I mean, Sri Lanka is a very sweaty country. So, RH. Yeah, that is a prime factor is RH. Because that is also one of the main concerns in the corrosion control. So, we will go for the details. Any other questions? No. So, any questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other questions are <laughs> right, okay. How much uh, any possibility to share yes or charts? Yeah. So that yeah, they are asking the sharing the ISO. So yeah, we are ready. CPD. Yeah, even CPD, because we have very I, I have very latest versions in uh, ISO and all the related standards because I, I personally Purchase it because my idea is to you know, give the subject very justifiably to the engineering community. Because when I give that, I know that you all can come out with, I mean, you all will be able to even teach me, right? So only thing is fundamentals are very important, right? If you basically follow the fundamentals, then over and above, then you can do that. So those are excellent. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, when it comes to using... Uh... Yeah. Pre galvanized, uh, Z perlins mm -hmm. in uh, environments like uh, C5. Yeah. So you recommend using duplex closing, duplex coating uh, as. Uh, in no, because you know, uh, what so happens is you don't have any alternative. You, know, you have to, even when you purchase decking pl plates or the perlins or whatever, so you have to, you know, the you have, you have to buy what is available locally. All what you have to do is. So when you get the pre-galvanized steel, so what my suggestion is, get the pre-galvanized and do the measuring and see what is the mean, mean of the existing sink thickness, right? After that, you have to follow ISO 12944, we will give that, uh, chapter 5, then you get a separate chart. So based on that, then you, can, you will be able to select the 14 system. Very straightforward it is there. Because, because you don't have this uh, good quality galvanized steel, you can't give it up, no, right? So you have the solution for that. So you recommend painting? Yeah, painting and... Even set Z purlings uh, for you? Yeah, Z and decking plates. So sometimes, you know, you will have the decking plates come underneath in the factory, right? So you have the few attacks from the fumes, right? Yeah. yeah. So only thing is, uh, then for the moment we would say duplex coating, but over and above, so you have to, you refer the chapter 5 of the, uh, that particular ISO 12944, chapter 5, and you must select the adaptable corro corrosivity class for your application. They are, they will give you the uh, specification, even in generics, then the unknown epoxy, polyurethane combination or whatever. But in brief, for the moment, you have the solution even relating to the durability. So if you want to go for 50 years, so you can even select the coating system for 50 years. Obviously, yeah. Now, the galvanizing people want to go for duplex. That is obvious. So, what are some things? Take They are also telling go for duplex. It's a Excuse me. Yeah. Can we use this um, fiber coating for a as a protection of uh, corrosion? Yeah. At what fiber, stage we can uh, use it? fiber? What what happens is, so you will have a problem with delamination, right? The fi fiber also, when chloride penetration, so even chemical penetration, that depends. Like you know, the, if it is in a chemical process plant, so you will have either chemical attack 
or if you are in a C5, yeah, uh, if you are in a C C5 uh, area, then you will have chloride attack. So then you will have a coating system. You have to follow very strictly the coating system. Otherwise, you will have either chloride penetration or the sulfates or whatever. So there are the, uh, even coatings for fiberglass is also mandatory. So in the same time, uh, for the moment, we, we have not you know the uh, uh, spoken much. The biggest challenge in the world now is corrosion under insulation, right? CUI, corrosion under insulation, you know, the made big losses even to United States. What happens is sometimes we feel our pipes are, they are all, uh, uh, the, the yeah, insulated, the insulated, yeah. Yeah, 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 so they thought they were fiber. So issue was the power was consuming more. Then one fine day they thought they will still investigate that. And they remove the fiber, there is no steel remain. So your fiber is good, but you don't know what's happening inside under the insulin. So the fiber is making it invisible that your steel plant is missing. Yeah. So it's all the spectra. You take the galvanizing uh, sheet and apply it to the smoking. Now, last time uh, we had the same situation because uh, one of our IBM has been covered with the fiber. And um, two weeks ago, we removed the fiber. Actually, there was a big uh, hole in the IBM because the repose was missing. So that's what uh, we thought is it a failure system or at what stage uh, we can implement it? Is it the beginning stage or at the yeah, what shall I answer? Yeah. Now, there's a zinc, there's a seal, but it's one millimeter seal there, 20 micron drop zinc. Three okay. gallons. So, you, as the galvanic equation says, you apply a duplex coating. After duplex coating, you may apply it. Because what you have to do is now, seal is cathodic, zinc is anodic. You want the price not come near the So you put a stick up board, stick up, do the end board. Uh, I'll show you this one. There is a question. Shall I answer that? Yeah, there is a question. Uh, one one gentleman is asking whether the galvanized can be painted when the paint is applied, it peels off. Right? Now, when you are applying the coatings or galvanized, now the, uh, the you have to select the epoxy or the there are primers which has been formulated for non-ferrous uh, substrates. Now it is available in the world. So this is the same primers used in Airbus, Boeing, and all the jets, right? The similar primers are available, even it's available locally. All that we have to do is you have to follow the uh, data sheet. The, because it was very obsolete you know, earlier, there were no uh, that such formulations done. Now we have the formulation. That uh, question. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, this yeah. The petroleum CPC. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is because you know that was done by HQCC, right? That is, they are again the metallurgical involvement is also there because what happens is now they use all recycle and different types of uh, steel. That is one thing. Over and above, when they came here, they uh, they took the I, I had to personally when they were you know the spoiling the contract, so I had to personally know at that time I was the uh, yeah.
55 also so but from that see, reversed hands now mostly welded in a eight in or whatever it is now we know this now we know the new seed is another color the blue rocks but in the challenge is remove that most people are reading, we have to go and put up in the tree. Whereas, you see, our own contractor, we are really happy to put up in the tree. No, Felix, there is another thing because during British's time, they followed the theories very well, right? So, even in car manufacturing and all that, when we came out with you know the latest engineering, now we have the formulas to go for the little above the break even. That is the biggest advantage we have. Well, those days, even in steel, they have added all these particular alloys to get particular alloys at that time. Again, free electrons free ferrous science That particular standard, if you follow ASTM A380, like Airbus A380, the ASTM A380. So all what you have to do is you have to trace free ferrous sign value you know, eka tamai react in the gun. Eda also theory is all the alloy karala, even normal mild steel, they added the alloy and eka molecule gun hit po eka santrupta karala me free iron statikala. Okay, tamai in deep chemistry, it is the thing, but practically we know that. So what happens is now even HQCC, these people, if you are not particular about that, why the subject is needed for engineering community. Otherwise, even if you are preparing a tender, so most of the cases, what I do whenever I write anything to Norachole, whoever on my own, right? So I used to write them the contract selection criteria also, right? And even if the sandblasting is done, I mean, the surface preparation, there are a lot of uh, standards involved. So you have to say all ISO, ASTM, SSPC, and I mean, whatever it is, because why these are needed, then you will know whatever the funding country, if it is funded by Japan, then they will have to go through GIS standard and we should have the knowledge, SA2.5 oh yeah, CD standard, if it is coming from Europe, then SSPC SP10, then NES, NES number two, or whatever it is. This is what we are now going to learn, then we are, we will be able to, you know, the, communicate to the entire world, whatever the project that you are getting. Then we know what the kind of a standard that we use. So that is why, because microanalysis is very needed. Because what happens is most of the time, aesthetic decorative paint corrosion control, you know, there is a big difference between corrosion. You are there, there is a big difference between corrosion controlling and decorative coatings. Yeah. Go to the questions of that. Oh, yeah. uh, questions. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, then we have a fundamental problem. Yeah, it can be. Yeah. So, yeah, there is a question that whether the hot dip galvanized uh, repair can be done. Yes, of course, it can be done. Right. Only thing is, if it is in a C4 or C5 area, now we know why this hot dip galvanizing, I mean, repair needs and premature corrosion came. Then you have you have to adapt to the system. We are repairing the corroded spot, and depending on the corrosivity class, so you will have to introduce a coating system. Yeah, in in brief, yeah, it can be uh, repaired. So you have to. There are products like uh, is it is it DRC or whatever different things, but it can be. So, uh, any questions? Yeah. Uh, since, uh, since you are expertise in this uh, corrosion uh, yeah. uh, studies, so can you share some insights on uh, some special metals like aluminium and cast iron? What are the the this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Because, that uh, we have to in, yeah. yeah. Basically, uh, uh, we do ships. The docket does packs fast attack craft because Israelis build the Doras. So Dockyard made similar design, fast attack craft. Then we made UFAC, ultra fast attack crafts. Those are aluminum bodied. Now aluminum bodied, there's a, 
uh, standard. ALMG 4.5. Aluminium is there. Magnesium is 4.5. Manganese is 2%. And carbon silicon a little bit. But uh, aluminium is less than 95%. Because 4.5 is magnesium. The ma normal market aluminium is 99% aluminium. That's not marine. So we call AA5083. That's a standard. ALMG 4.5, if you go into the internet, you find that's a marine aluminium, number one. Number two, the as we said, as Mr. Aruna said, the alloying. There are, I, I have the slide here, it takes a long time. The, the anti-corrosive metals are chromium, nickel, molybdenum, and magnesium, uh, manganese. So what people do is, the stainless steel is 18% chromium, 12% nickel, 2% manganese, 2% molybdenum, which means steel is 65%. So that's the loin. So answering your question, you put those anti-corrosive property based alloys, you, you are getting anti-corrosion. Okay. If you can explain that. Yeah, I can, I can, no problem. But only thing, he has a time problem. <laughs> It is important for me. Yeah, yeah. But we'll be doing it in the CP definitely. Now I'll start from here. It's easy for me. Now we are to talking about steel. Now I told you that brown rust is ferrous oxide, blue rust is ferrous ferric oxide. So this particular this particular plate has 100% corroded. Now, if you take the new steel, all blue, 100% corroded. Now, when it comes to the stainless steel, okay. Now, there is so many stainless steel, 204, 202, 312, 316, 304, so many, so many. But we are talking, the dockyard is using 316L. Now, if you look at the, the chemical composition, now, if you take yakada, 99% yakada, and 1% is carbon, silicon, uh, manganese, phosphorus, sulfur, nitrogen. 99% ferrous. But when it comes to stainless steel, there are 304 and 316. Now, if I, uh, what Mr. Varuna wanted me to say is, now we tell, listen to me very carefully. Stainless steel. Stainless steel. Can you, stain means pallum, eh? Less is, I don't know. Steel is yakada. Pallang yakada. Less. Sir, what do you think? Stainless steel, what do you think? Yeah. Adu the nati the. Adu. Yeah, that's correct. Ape rate minus to keno, stainless can less. Pallang rahita yakada. Eme yo me loki ne. The Sudda Namadalatin is stain less. Steel here. Then, either king, the Tunsia dase hatra got tama, molybdenum naiki. Tunsia dase got tama, molybdenum de casa patino. Then, Ugulu, Tunsia hatra stainless steel willing monari, me facade de cari monari, or glass are in a brother Makulogi, or glass bandani. A spider, spider. Ah, ega gaba, Tunsia three, muda in the molybdenum nariza, palangino. So you have to use 316. Now, this is a chart what Mr. Arunam wanted to show me. What we are using is 304L and 316L. But there are so many other stainless steels which has 6% 6, 6 molybdenum. 6% 6 molybdenum. AL6XN can go to the sea water. So it is a two-hour lecture. You are asking me to say within five minutes. Basically, but it's okay. So now, as we said, now if you take this steel, make a malakat naikal atama gulhi tu. This is 100% corroded. Ferrosoferic oxide. Then make a ferrous oxide. 100% corroded. So we'll be doing the rust grades later on. Rust grade A, rust grade B, rust grade C, rust grade C, and surface preparation standards, which is coming into the CPD. Uh, so I think we'll wait for it. That is seven fifteen now. <laughs> I think you, you need to go. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, uh, first, first of all, uh, thank you very much for our two uh, uh, professionals and the resource person uh, conducting this session in a manner that uh, I don't know. I really enjoy this one, the chemistry lessons we had given and all the details we had given in a way that uh, it would attract uh, our mind and the uh, way you had presented is quite, quite remarkable. And I think uh, I have to specially thank you for making uh, engineering so interesting because most of the time we feel very bored lectures, but here I, I, I felt uh, very enjoyable listening to you all. And thank you very much, uh, Mr. Felix and Mr. Aruna Rajaratna for having this session with us and uh, bringing uh, so much information to us. So I think uh, uh, our next step is to go into the CPD, uh, which will have three day session so that uh, we, we can go into much detailed calculation, which is required in engineering uh, profession uh, and uh, get it done. So. Uh, so here, right now, I would like to conclude the session and I would like to welcome our uh, Vice President, uh, Madam Kamala Gunawadhan and our Chair, Civil Section and Committee Chairman, uh, Sri Mangala, had uh, joined the session and uh, thank you very much for participating. So now uh, it's the time for us to give the token of appreciation. So I would like uh, our Vice President, uh, Madam Kamala Gunawadhan, to come to the podium to hand over the uh, memento to uh, Mr. Felix first. And uh, I would like uh, then uh, invite uh, Mr. Aruna Rajaratna uh, for uh, participating in this event and uh, take a moment from our Vice President, uh, Mr. Sunawadhan. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Gunadhana, and uh, thank you very much for all the members who had participated. And I would like to, uh, before before we wind up, I would like to thank our sponsors, uh, LTL Galvanizing, uh, for this event, uh, supporting us in uh, this uh, lecture supporting uh, all the members to gain knowledge and uh, giving all the expertise uh, that you have. So we would like also the galvanizing plan to come uh, for a part in CPD uh, where we would like to uh, uh, teach them on modern galvanizing technology and uh, how they can use it in the structures and uh, all the uh, requirement uh, for engineers to look in their um, uh, projects and uh, engineering construction. So, uh, so uh, I would like uh, everybody uh, who can participate for CBT to take place and gain the knowledge. And uh, so I now uh, wind up the session and I, uh, there's an invitation for everyone here that we had arranged a uh, uh, little uh, refreshment after this session at uh, our members launch please join that one and enjoy the session with IESL and thank you very much for participating in this event yeah yeah uh, actually, it is uh, scheduled on um, April 20th. We initially planned to have uh, March, but we uh, decided to go into April 20th. It will be three-day session. So most important thing is uh, Mr. Aruna had promised that uh, he would uh, try to share all uh, standards, that uh, knowledge that he has, so that uh, 
i really appreciate those kind of generosity uh, from such a, a good professionals uh, supporting all our engineering community to get into this one and so please uh, participate for that uh, as much as possible thank you